This is my daily PC. It has a high-end 16-core processor that I've spent hours overclocking to milk every drop of performance while maintaining stability. I've also overclocked the system's GPU, configured XMP settings, and set custom fan curves to strike the perfect balance between performance and noise. Ignore the fan that's not really sure where he is. The point is, because I use this machine every day, I've spent a lot of time making it perform and feel just right. But this computer isn't my only daily driver. This is my 2018 Audi RS3. It's powered by a 2.5 liter turbo inline five cylinder with 400 horsepower and 354 pound feet of torque paired to a seven speed dual clutch automatic transmission. Like my PC, I've already done some tweaking, such as changing the suspension and tires and flashing the ECU with a Unitronic Stage 1 tune, adding an estimated 76 horsepower and 115 pound-feet of torque. They're welcome improvements to an already great running vehicle, but there's still lots of performance left on the table here, so today I'm bringing you along for the next evolution stage of the Bitmobile. We actually don't ever have to call it that again. That's stupid. We'll be upgrading the vehicle's exhaust and intake with parts from AWE tuning. These modifications will increase power and torque while transforming the sound of the car significantly. For starters, the AWE Switch Path exhaust suite allows spent gases to escape more efficiently, which essentially lets the car breathe better, offering up power gains and creating a more aggressive exhaust note that will upset my wife. If the Switch Path exhaust is designed to help my car exhale, AWE's S-Flow closed carbon intake aids in the inhalation process. It features a 4.5 inch intake tube, making this the largest constant diameter intake system for the 8V RS3 on the market. The unit delivers a 30% increase in filter surface area over stock, decent power gains, and intoxicating turbo spool and diverter sounds that my ears can't wait to verify. Of course, in true TechTuber fashion, I will be benchmarking the car's before and after performance in three areas. Dyno numbers that we'll hopefully be able to get from the mechanics so we can track our horsepower and torque gains, zero to 60 times, and while entirely subjective, sound. And I think on that note, we can begin testing right now. Three point six seven. By the way, I'm using an Aim Solo two to record my zero to sixty times, and it is currently sixty three degrees Fahrenheit. All right, let's do one more. Three point five one. I'll take it. Our zero to 60 times are done. I've already recorded all the sound testing for the car as is, but I'll show it to you guys once we get the car back after all the upgrades are done so we can do a, a quick AB comparison. At this point, we're pretty much ready to install these parts. This time around, I'm just gonna let the professionals handle it. We're gonna go to a mechanic that I trust who lives not too far from us, and uh, hopefully they'll get it back to us within a day or so. All right, I just picked up the car from the mechanic and hurler merler, it is insane. We'll, we'll get to the good bits in just a moment. But first, I've got some bad news followed by a bit of good news and then we'll talk about the performance upgrades, which is obviously great news. So the bad news is that I was unable to get dyno numbers before the upgrades because my main mechanic does not have a dyno after all, like I thought he did. So that's my bad. I don't know why I thought he had a dyno. I guess I had the option to go to a different mechanic at the time that did have a dyno, but that would have significantly delayed delayed the installation because my main mechanic who, who did the job was super backed up. So he managed to squeeze me in at that slot. So I was like, all right, just screw it. We'll just, we'll just go with the installation. So unfortunately I don't have prior dyno numbers. However, I'm gonna try to hit up a mechanic later today that does have a dyno so I can hopefully get you guys the performance and torque numbers of the car in its current state. I know it's not ideal. I would have loved to have the AB comparison, but I gotta roll with the punches. But let's talk about the upgrades. For starters, the AWE switch path exhaust is an absolute animal. I mean, this car was already a beast from the factory, but this kind of just unleashes it. It's like an untamed bull now. It sounds awesome. And it's hitting these low frequencies that the factory pipes just never could. Uh, so it's really bassy. I mean, 
mean, all bass heads will rejoice at the sound of this thing. The other thing I really love about it is that it doesn't replace the factory sound. It stays true to the original note, it just adds loads of aggression to it. So that's like the best of both worlds for me because I absolutely love how this car already sounded right from the dealer. It just sounds way meaner now. The crackles and pops are a lot more pronounced, particularly on the downshifts, and they will scare nearby pedestrians, mark my words. Um, so that's one thing to consider here is that not only does the exhaust sound just way more aggressive, but it's a lot louder too. So it's super great when you're driving through canyons or on the freeway because you can actually hear the exhaust a lot better than you could previously uh, because this is such a quiet cabin. This car has such a quiet interior. It's very noise isolated. So even though the factory exhaust was somewhat loud, uh, you couldn't really hear it, at least for me, as much as I wanted to. But now it's like, boom in your face. You can hear it with the windows up or down, uh, no problems there. If you're driving through a downtown area, however, you will attract lots of attention. Many heads will turn to the point where you're getting so many looks, it will spike your anxiety levels, uh, at least if you're someone like me. Fortunately, you can still open and close the valves just like you would from the factory. Take the car out of sport mode and it instantly quiets up so you don't attract that unwanted attention or make your neighbors really mad at you. I share the same enthusiasm and excitement uh, with the S-Flow carbon intake. This thing is just awesome. I mean, it just sounds amazing. Intoxicating turbo spool and diverter valve sounds confirmed. I mean, just, just listen to this. It just makes me want to mad dash to every next stoplight so I can get another hit of those glorious noises. Uh, now, albeit it will be a little bit harder to hear with the windows down with this psychotic exhaust completely dominating, but when the cabin's closed, you can definitely hear every little detail of the intake at work, and it's just awesome. The symphony that the intake and exhaust make together just makes the drive so much more engaging to me. I feel like being able to listen to the car gives me a heightened sense of awareness that lets me respond better to the car's movements while just creating this overall more visceral thrill at every turn. It's, it's an awesome experience. All right, we're on our way to get the car dynoed. Found a mechanic that's maybe an hour away from our place, but uh, worth a drive if they can get us reliable numbers. They do have a chassis dyno that does all wheel drive and uh, it should be pretty sweet. I'm very excited to see what the numbers on this car are. All right, we've got the dyno results back and here they are. They did three pulls and the best result out of the three scored 438 wheel horsepower and 491 pound-feet of torque. Now, obviously we don't have the before numbers, but I did go online and found some 2018 Audi RS3 stock dyno numbers from a couple other people who had run the test themselves. They're using a different dyno machine. There's other factors involved that will undoubtedly introduce some variance, but this is all I really have to go on. So I guess it's better than nothing. I actually was pretty generous here. I took the highest scoring stock Audi RS3 dyno test I could find online, which was 355 wheel horsepower power. So 355 versus our score of 438. That's a 23, over a 23% gain in wheel horsepower, which is pretty significant when you consider all we did was a stage one Unitronic tune and the AWE modifications with the intake and exhaust. So I'm very happy with that result. 23% is definitely nothing to scoff at. I couldn't find a good torque number online, so I'm not exactly sure how much higher this 491 score is over stock. Now bear in mind that the advertised figure for the Audi RS3 stock is 400 horsepower, but that's engine horsepower. What we measured today was wheel horsepower, which is usually quite a bit lower. It makes sense the car manufacturers would want to advertise the highest, most attractive looking figures. Um, but even though we didn't get the before numbers this time around, we can still use this set of data moving forward. So if I make any more modifications to the car and we, and we run dyno tests again, we'll at least have these numbers to compare them to. At this point, I'm sure I've kept you guys waiting long enough. So here is a before and after sound test.
right, we're ready for our second round of zero to 60 times with the upgraded parts. Uh, still got the stage one tune. It's also 69 degrees Fahrenheit right now, which is a little warmer than the first time around, but uh, the time to beat is 3.51. That's what we got the first time around, 3.51 seconds. Um, I'm gonna do a couple launches here and we'll just take the best one uh, and hopefully it'll be faster. Three point eight two. That was not as fast, huh? Just not quite as responsive of a launch there. Let's give it another go. Three point nine. Come on. It definitely doesn't feel quite as snappy as it used to. Oh, you know what? While my car was at the mechanic, my stage one tune might have got reset back to stock. I'm gonna try reflashing. All right, I've got the Uniconnect Plus software open on my laptop. We are connected to the car's OBD2 port. I'm just gonna try reflashing to stage one here. We'll see if this makes a difference. After this is done, I might as well reflash the stage two TCU as well, since that's what we were running before. Okay, we were able to successfully flash our ECU and TCU. Now we can guarantee, we know for sure, 100% that our ECU and TCU are operating exactly like they were when we first started testing. So I think we're finally ready to give this zero to 60 another try. Three point seven one. It's definitely better than the last time we did it, but not quite as quick as the first time. Ooh. Whoa. Three point five four. Okay, we're at least very much neck and neck with what we were before the upgrades. And we have to be realistic about this, right? I mean, we're not gonna see tremendous gains in our zero to 60 times when we're only upgrading the car roughly 30 horsepower because it's just not a, a huge distance. Quarter mile runs would have been way more interesting because you'd see significantly more variance between the tests, but unfortunately I just didn't have the bandwidth to uh, try to locate a quarter mile drag strip anywhere near me uh, for this video, maybe next time. So I guess wrapping things up here, I mean, I couldn't really be happier with how the car is handling, how it's performing, and obviously the noise factor. Everything is just elevated. And this being my first round of series performance upgrades, I can really see how car enthusiasts get hooked on uh, upgrading and modifying their cars. I mean, there's a lot of parallels with overclocking your PC here, right? You're essentially removing or stripping down factory limitations uh, to squeeze every last drop of performance out of your hardware that you know it's capable of. And seeing how many similarities there are between the car world and the PC world is one of the main reasons that led me to getting this car in the first place, getting a car that was fun to drive and um, had a good starting off point for, for modifications. And this uh, this engine is absolutely incredible for that. So uh, that's pretty much gonna wrap it up for me though, guys. I know this is probably not my most polished video because first car video ever and total car noob, but let me know what you guys thought down below, what you think of the upgrades, what you think of the sound, and uh, let me know if you'd like to see another car video in the future, perhaps. Apart from that, toss a like on the video if you enjoyed it, get subscribed for more tech content on the way, and I'll see you guys in the next one.